everybody, welcome into First Take. We have some husky love on this show today. Gino Oriema will join us in just a bit. You know, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, oh I got oh. my blue on, boys. Oh. I love you. I love Gino. Love Gino. Oh. Me too. That makes you, two of us. You've spoken on several. Well, occasions. that makes two of you. Skip Bayless. I'm kidding. Be nice. Be nice. Stephen A. Smith. What's I'm up, what's Molly Carroll. How are you? Good morning, guys. By the way, How this guy doing? called me last night he did? to gloat about oh. the Denver Broncos acquiring Vernon Davis, saying it might be over for my Patriots now. <laughs> We will discuss that in you just a couple of minutes him. here. Yes, he did. I love it. All You're right. You're supposed to tell America that. Oh, well, tell our segment coming up. I got to teach you how to tease. I'm just saying. Oh. It's all right. All right. It's okay. All right. We'll get into that in just a I'm bit. I'm just messing with you, bro. I'm just messing with you. All right. How about, how about last night? How about it? The Panthers extend their perfect record, beating the Colts by three points in overtime. Andrew Luck showed resilience after the Colts fell behind 23 to six in the fourth. They scored on their final three possessions of the quarter and forced two, three and outs. So you heard Andrew Luck say that their problems are his to fix, but how much did he redeem himself Ooh. in the fourth quarter, Skip? Molly, Stephen A, Andrew Luck did find some rhythm. He did inspire his team for a while, and I must admit, I was impressed for a while, but I'm not going to put a whole lot of stock in it, and I'm not going to move off my position that he has been prematurely coronated as a first ballot lock as an Andrew Locke Hall of Famer. I'm not going to back off that. Okay. I thought last night was a classic case of Carolina being in complete control, building its lead to 23 to 6 with 11 minutes left, following Andrew Locke's second interception of the game. Then I thought the Panthers took their foot off the gas on offense and they ran out of gas on defense. And as the rain did slack off some, maybe the wet ball was bothering Andrew Luck. It looked like it bothered everybody. Mm -hmm. It did. He did start to have far more time. I thought at times he had forever to throw in the pocket. And remember, the receivers have a big advantage on rain slick turf over the defensive backs. And I thought his receivers started taking advantage. Luck made some nice throws. He also missed some big throws down the stretch. And I must say, that Whalen catch, quote mm -hmm. unquote, that, that on fourth and 10 that kept the game alive, uh, if we could see that real quick, that just wasn't a catch. I'm sorry, that was ground aided, and it should have ended the game right then and there, the Whalen catch on fourth and 10 late Got in the it. game. Then we had, there it is. Yep. Then we had Luke Keekley dropping an interception in the end zone that also would have and should have ended the game. And then, of course, we had Andrew Luck's third interception of the game, which did set up the winning field goal for the Carolina Panthers. So it's hard to say that Andrew Luck redeemed himself in the fourth quarter as well as he did play because his QBR has plummeted all the way to 38 on scale of 100 this year. It has fallen, as you know, we talked about several times. It has mm -hmm. regressed every year, all four of his years, his QBR has. Andrew Luck, the turnover machine that he is, now leads the National Football League in interceptions, and he's only played six games That's out right. of the, you eight, know, out like, of the eight. Out of the eight. Games, yes. So he's one in five as a starter, mm -hmm. and... <sighs> I, I just didn't see enough last night to say he's back and I should back off my position. I just think he's astonishingly overrated. And I stand by that. And I want your thoughts. Can you defend him? <clears throat> Skip Bayless, I can defend the future of Andrew Luck because I believe that from a physical standpoint, it is undeniable the gifts that he has. Uh, from an intellectual standpoint, going to Stanford, playing college football the way that he played and playing over the first three years the way that he played in the NFL. I believe in Andrew Luck. I believe that the future is incredibly, incredibly bright for him. The future. But at this moment in time, Andrew Luck looks awful. He looks god-awful. I mean, it is despicable, some of the interceptions that he has thrown. It's like he has brain lock, for crying mm -hmm. out loud. And I will go as far as to say if we were talking about other quarterbacks, quarterbacks that had athletic ability, quarterbacks that ran more than they threw or whatever the case may be, if this were a Michael Vick, if this were mm -hmm. a Colin Kaepernick, who we will get into later, yep. if Russell Wilson were to do something like this, if this were RG3, we would be singing a different tune, literally questioning the violence viability of this quarterback we would. we would there is no denying that and they've already lost more games or just as many games this season as they've lost 
each of the last mm -hmm. three seasons. They're three and five right now. Andrew Luck looks awful. He looks like he has no clue half the time. On top of it all, the mistakes are inexplicable and the confidence level has flagrantly diminished. When you look at him, he literally looks beaten and he looks defeated. When he threw one of those interceptions, when he overthrew, I forgot who it was, fleeing on Moncrief for somebody. Mm -hmm. When he overthrew them and he threw an interception, he laid in the grass face down yep. because he was so disgusted with himself because he couldn't believe. He looks defeated. Mm -hmm. Now, in defense of him, he did lead that comeback. They did take a lead. They had the lead in overtime, okay? I mean, the, the bottom line yep. is that he had an opportunity to win this game. Yep. But ultimately, it didn't come through. It was contributable to his mistakes. Don't, there's no doubt about that. But I'm going to go as far as to say this. <clears throat> I'm looking at the steps of Mr. Ryan Grigson, the general manager for these Indianapolis Colts. And I'm going to say, if not wholesale changes that need to be made, he may be the biggest problem of all. Now, I want to emphasize that I am not a football aficionado. I'm a reporter, and I read, and I follow. I haven't been in a coach locker room. I haven't spoken to Mr. Grigson personally, so I'm not in any way trying to decipher his level of intellect, his competency at the position, but this is a results-oriented business, and all we can go by is what we see. You're arguing with the owner, Jim Ayersay, in the locker room. That's just not some argument about wins and losses. It's about the fact that this guy has the power. Skip Bayless, every GM doesn't have this power. But Grigson not only has the power to assemble a lineup, Skip, Molly, but he also tells Pagano who to put in that starting lineup. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that spent $55 million on wideouts, you know, and buffering their offense, but only 55000 on the offensive line. You got a guy like Harrimans who's now on the bench. Muhort was starting in place of him. You've got other things going on. This offensive line has been an issue for years. You haven't protected Andrew Luck enough. You haven't done enough to elevate his level of confidence because you are right. There are a lot of people, myself included, who has raved about, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, about Andrew Luck. Mm -hmm. But the flip side to it, Skip, is that if I'm his GM, you know what I'm doing? I'm not raving about him. I'm doing all that I can to protect him, to facilitate his ability to shine. And I don't think enough has been done to help him. Frank Gore was supposed to be the answer. I know he cares. I know he runs hard. And he hasn't been a scrub by any stretch of the imagination. Frank Gore is to be respected. But spectacular is not the word that jumps out with you. Amar Bradshaw had a 23-yard run. He finished with 21 yards on three carries. Why? Because the other two were for minus two yards, okay? You look at their running game, it's been suspect. You look at their offensive line throughout his history in Indianapolis, it has been suspect. In no way, and I'm trying to absolve Andrew Luck because I know you're right about how bad he has been as it pertains to the turnovers. But Skip Bayless, I would say to you, that if you were the general manager for the Indianapolis Colts and you had Andrew Luck as your quarterback, you wouldn't just be resting on the laurels that he has earned for you. You would think about putting things around him to protect him, even from himself. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that has happened. You would see some of the flaws. And you would sit there and say, all right, we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do that. That is not what Grigson is doing. And I think as a result, that's why S.A. got in his face. I think that's why Pagano is on the hot seat, when in fact, I don't even know how much coaching Pagano is allowed to do because of Grigson's presence, at least from what I've been told. So yeah. I look at it from that perspective, and I say that you have to look, you have to sincerely think about making some kind of change in the hierarchy of the Indianapolis coach because the organization right now appears to be dysfunctional. The locker room just throws out a bunch of cliches. We got to keep grinding. We got to keep working hard and all of this other stuff. But in the end, what it comes down to is that there's some serious changes, and I'm telling you right now that's what you got to get Kravitz column mm -hmm. in the star Bob Kravitz, uh, uh, Bob Kravitz. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry Bob Kravitz exceptional column today mm -hmm. I think he makes valid points he covers this team and you you swear by him as well as well as I do I mean read the man's column I think he says it all okay here's my problem with everything you just said okay there's some hypocrisy going on because you love this team before the season started yeah 
Molly liked this team, I remember. You I thought they thought were the moves I, were I really agree. Good. I agree with I thought they wanted to come up. This. I don't think it's hypocrisy. Okay. I think right. I, I think that you 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 go by what you're seeing, Skip. But, but you thought the pieces added were sensational, like this was gonna put Andrew Luck over the top this year and into the Super Bowl. Well, I thought right? so, yes. Andre Johnson, but an experienced wide receiver. Frank Gore, an experienced viable running back. But the offensive line was something that we repeatedly pointed out. Okay, there, there's something to be said for a great quarterback making those around him better. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady just keeps making anyone you want to throw in his starting it's lineup fair, better. Skip. It is, it's it not is fair. fair. It's this not is fair. his fourth year in the league. Andrew Locke is in first ballot Hall Tom of Tom Brady okay? was protected a okay. lot early on. He graduated to this position as well. Let's be clear about that. Okay, look. I, I, I understand about Ryan Grigson, Chuck Pagano, I get all that, but I'm tired of hearing everyone give this young man a pass. Now he's got fractured ribs, and he says after the game, I, I can't comment on that. And so it leads every time, every, what, what conclusion does everybody jump well, what to? Do you want him he to do does that? have fractured ribs. What do you want him to do? Well, do you, you want him to play or not? If, saying, if he, he plays, plays I say, I, I got to grade you as you play. Well, nobody's saying I'm, that you can't okay. grade him, but you can't knock him for his answer when you ask the question. What's well, he, you want him to lie to you? Do you want him to look you in the face and tell you a bold face lie? How about the truth? Well, I'm just saying, again, he said, I can't comment on that. That's mm -hmm. part of the truth. Okay. He's a player. But the Ryan organization Grigson is, is on record as saying, he's not hurt, and I didn't put him on the, the injury he, he, report because he's not hurt. Yeah, but you don't know if okay. Ryan Grigson so and Chuck, you don't know if Ryan Grigson and, and Chuck Pagano told him don't touch on it. You don't know that. Well, I'm sure they did. All right. Well, if they okay. did, then what? Then what you getting okay. on the floor? Is he hurt or not? Is he hurt? Are he we played, giving him the hurt pass or no, not? No, hurt he played. Pass? He played. Okay, he played. He played. And, and he looked just fine to me, except for the wet football. But everybody had a problem with the wet football. A lot of quarterbacks can't. A lot of sure. great quarterbacks can't throw wet footballs. I agree. Cam was having trouble with it, so I give him a pass. But by the fourth quarter, the rain did slack off, and then you could start to see both quarterbacks operate the way they can operate. And I saw good things from Andrew Luck, and I saw what you said. His confidence has cratered. He's not the same mentally as he used to be because he's starting to get exposed by this league as an interception thrower, as someone who j j is wildly erratic with the football in his hand. You can say, well, he's not protected. Last night, he, he had time, he, he had forever in the fourth quarter in the pocket to throw the football. I don't look at it that way. And I don't know how many times I gotta mm -hmm. keep saying that. I know that he has looked bad this season. But I stand by everything that I've said about him in terms of what I believe his career will end up being. I think he has that kind of talent that just, I, you know, you, you talk about a, a future Hall of Famer, fine. Skip, when you look at his size, his legs, his arm strength, his durability, his football mm -hmm. intellect over the first three years, et cetera, et cetera, I think there's a lot of promise there, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Now... What he has done this year is taking a huge step back. I think we have to look at the organization and ask ourselves why that is. Mm -hmm. How could this quarterback take this kind of step in the wrong direction? Mm -hmm. You want to look at Andrew Luck. I do. I He's want to look at I want to look at Andrew Luck and everything around mm -hmm. Andrew Luck. Okay. That's what I want to do. I don't. I did, I never anticipated that he'd be. You know, be. When I said Super Bowl, I'm like, look, this kid's got those kind of big time skills. And I did have a lot of belief in the Indianapolis Colts. And a lot of people, not just myself, are sitting they around did. shocked. I agree. And yeah. what we're seeing from the Indianapolis yep. Colts, it's a team game or it's not. You want to look at Andrew Luck? You be my guest. You go right ahead. But you know something? Mm -hmm. Last time I checked, yep. it's a team that wins football games. Okay. And there's but, a lot but, of other stuff going on with the Indianapolis but, but Colts. I, I'm starting to see the LeBron syndrome kick in here. Oh, he just doesn't have enough help. It's not his fault. But he, he didn't. Have enough help. But LeBron did it. Huh? He but did LeBron it twice. Did it. I, I give but, him but that. But LeBron did not. LeBron did not, because even though a lot of your criticism was valid, mm -hmm. some of it wasn't. The most valid criticism you had about LeBron back in the day were those free throws. Mm -hmm. And now he was fearful of going to the free throw line. But you were taking a step further and attach stuff to him and ignore the teammates around him. And I'm like, wait a minute. If you sitting up there, you getting double and triple team, and you kicking it out to Cats, and they going up against Orlando in the conference finals and can't hit a damn jump shot when they spent all year hitting jump shots, feigning, taking pictures with one another, and having a ball. Well, 
Mac did, but the, seven I'm, just, I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying you used to get on I, him. Yeah. That's why when I he still put, do. Uh, well, no, no, Opening but, night, but he didn't take now. it to the hole. But it's different okay. now. All it's right. different now because now you acknowledge mm -hmm. accurately what is his fault and is not, whereas yeah. before you just used to pour it on. I don't know about yes, that. You, you so know. you to yes, you did. 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 We'll see. He dropped 50. You'd come in and complain I about the way not. he danced. That's false. I'd come in here and say, I am impressed, and you know it. You come in here and complain about the way he danced? Hey, I don't like well, how he right, shimmy. Guys, well, that, one, like that. that wasn't on a night he dropped 50. Yeah, I think it yeah, was. I don't think, I think it was. was. Let's I think move was. on, gentlemen. And Hello, everybody. Welcome into First Take. We have some husky love on the show today. Gino Oriema will join us in just a bit. You know, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, oh I got oh. my blue on, boys. Oh. I love you. I love Gino. Love Gino. Oh. Me too. That makes two of us. You've spoken on several. Well, that makes two of you. Skip Bayless. I'm kidding. Be nice. Be nice. Stephen A. Smith. What's I'm up, Molly Karam. How are you? Good morning, guys. By the way, How this guy doing? called me last night he did? to gloat about oh. the Denver Broncos acquiring Vernon Davis, saying it might be over for my Patriots now. <laughs> We will discuss that in you just a couple of minutes him. here. Yes, he did. I love it. All You're right. I'm supposed to tell America that. Oh, we'll tell our segment <laughs> coming up. I got to teach you how to tease. I'm just saying. Oh. It's all right. All right. It's okay. All right. <laughs> we'll get into that in just a I'm bit. I'm just messing but... with you, bro. I'm just messing with you. All right. How about, how about last night? How about it? The Panthers extend their perfect record, beating the Colts by three points in overtime. Andrew Luck showed resilience after the Colts fell behind 23 to six in the fourth. They scored on their final three possessions of the quarter and forced two, three and outs. So you heard Andrew Luck say that their problems are his to fix, but how much did he redeem himself Ooh. in the fourth quarter, Skip? Molly, Stephen A, Andrew Luck did find some rhythm. He did inspire his team for a while, and I must admit, I was impressed for a while, but I'm not going to put a whole lot of stock in it, and I'm not going to move off my position that he has been prematurely coronated as a first ballot lock as an Andrew Locke Hall of Famer. I'm not going to back off that. Okay. I thought last night was a classic case of Carolina being in complete control, building its lead to 23 to 6 with 11 minutes left, following Andrew Locke's second interception of the game. Then I thought the Panthers took their foot off the gas on offense and they ran out of gas on defense. And as the rain did slack off some, maybe the wet ball was bothering Andrew Luck. It looked like it bothered everybody. Mm -hmm. It did. He did start to have far more. I, I thought at times he had forever to throw in the pocket. And remember, the receivers have a big advantage on rain slick turf over the defensive backs. And I thought his receivers started taking advantage. Luck made some nice throws. He also missed some big throws down the stretch. And I must say, that Whalen catch, quote unquote, mm -hmm. that, that on fourth and 10 that kept the game alive, uh, if we could see that real quick, that just wasn't a catch. I'm sorry, that was ground aided, and it should have ended the game right then and there, the Whalen catch on fourth and 10 late Got in it. the game. Then we had, there it is. Yep. Then we had Luke Keekley dropping an interception in the end zone that also would have and should have ended the game. And then, of course, we had Andrew Luck's third interception of the game, which did set up the winning field goal for the Carolina Panthers. So it's hard to say that Andrew Luck redeemed himself in the fourth quarter as well as he did play because his QBR has plummeted all the way to 38 on scale of 100 this mm -hmm. year. It has fallen, as you know, and we've talked about several times. It has mm -hmm. regressed every year, all four of his years, his QBR has. Andrew Luck, the turnover machine that he is, now leads the National Football League in interceptions, and he's only played six games That's out right. of the, you eight, know, out like, of the eight. Out of the eight. Games, yes. So he's one in five as a starter, mm -hmm. and I, I just didn't see enough last night to say he's back and I should back off my position. I just think he's astonishingly overrated, and I stand by that, and I want your thoughts. Can you defend him? Skip Bayless, I can defend the future of Andrew Luck because I believe that from a physical standpoint, it is undeniable the gifts that he has. Uh, from an intellectual standpoint, going to Stanford, playing college football the way that he played and playing over the first three years the way that he played in the NFL, I believe in Andrew Luck. I believe that the 